Oh! <laughs> we can <gonna> oops, Peleko! <laughs> what? Oh my god! Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be making a build guide on the Ice Nova Carlson Career Assassin. So yeah, it's, I've been working on this build for a while now and it's actually turned out a lot better than I expected. Um, I'll explain a bit about the tree. I'll leave the pastebin in the description. But first of all, I want to say that the build is very, very expensive and I would not recommend it to any type of a new player because it would be very hard to get the gear 
and the setup that I've got going here for a beginner player. So I don't recommend it for any of that. So just make sure you're careful and without any invest or without or with a lower budget version of this build, it does not feel good and it's very problematic and you're not going to like the build. So make sure you're investing enough into this build and investing enough means really similar stuff to what I have because otherwise it's going to be a bit of a problem for you guys. And I I will give a very or oh, very few budget options you can get on some things, but most of all, it needs to be similar stuff to what I have. And I'll say um, stuff like uh, if you don't need resist on a specific piece of gear or whatever. Um, obviously, you don't need the exact same, but as long as you hit your resist cap and all that. And yeah. Um, also, another thing I will say, and I know this is expensive, but you do not need bottled faith. That is something I will also cover, and I'll tell you why as well. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the clips at the beginning. So uh, I guess we'll start off with the gear. Uh, first of all, we're running a Cost Breeze Malice. Now we run a 30% quality one with the quality enchant that gives increased accuracy per 22% quality, which is really useful because accuracy is a bit of a problem on this build. Um, so I highly recommend you go for this if possible. Uh, as you can see, our chance to hit is 100% over here. And you need to make sure you have a 100% hit chance. It's very, very important for this build. And if you don't have a 100% hit chance, you're going to do way less damage. And you're going to be like, where's my DPS? So make sure you have that. So uh, next off, we'll go to the helmet. So you just need some resists and some energy shield. Uh, this is a low life chevrons build. So we're going for energy shield on the gear. So just to keep that in mind. Um, so over here, I searched for increased energy shield and I crafted on myself. Uh, flat energy shield because it was cheaper to do this than to look for one that already had 250 ES. So that's what I did. And it was uh, turned out not too expensive, this helmet. It's really not that bad. If you want to upgrade this helmet even more, you want to go for nearby enemies have minus nine cold resist and plus one power charges. That's going to be the ideal helmet over here if you want to take this world even further. The helm enchant here does not make a difference and it doesn't matter. But if you want a good helm enchant, you want to go for ice and over damage. And that will be your best in slot over there. Next off, we have a Prism Guardian over here. Uh, all you need to look for here is a high roll on the Dexterity because we struggle to meet the Dexterity requirements or we just about meet them. So make sure you get a high Dexterity roll. If you want to go all out on the Prism Guardian, make sure you get a plus two Aura Gems in the Implicit Corruption. Uh, that will make your Discipline, your Hatred and your Zelo Tree much stronger or a bit stronger. Not much stronger, but a little bit stronger. So next up, we have a Presence of Chayla, and we allocate Tranquility. Uh, this Anoint is really, really good, uh, and I highly recommend it. And as you can see, it says what it does there. Increases and reductions to maximum energy shield also apply to spell damage or at 30% of their value. So we're gaining quite a bit of damage off this, and I highly recommend it. And I also recommend you uh, attribute quality your Chayla uh, Amulet with Life and Mana modifiers, which is... I uh, can't remember which uh, catalyst that is exactly, but that's the one you want to use. Life and mana modifiers to 20%. So we get, instead of 20% max life converted to energy shield, we get 24%, which actually ups our ES a, a little bit. So it's very useful. Uh, next up over here, we have a Mark of the Shaper. So this ring is really, really good. And I highly recommend you quality cast a modifier it over here. And as you can see, it ups our spell damage from 79, which is the normal value that I got on the ring. And you do want to get a high roll on this if possible. And it goes to 94%, which is really, really good. And then the other ring over here, the reason why it's a shape of Elder is because I wanted Assassin's Mark. And I also wanted the global accuracy rating, which I awaken at all. Now you might think this is not worth it, but accuracy is such a struggle on this build. It's such a big problem. So I just, I just awaken at all. Uh, so Assassin's Mark is a Shaper mod, Global Accuracy Rating is an Elder mod, and I put those together on an Opal Ring over here. And we created a, this, which isn't that good, but it does the job. So it gives some ES as well, uh, it gives some mana regen and faster and ES recharge rate, which is nice, uh, nice to have just as a crafter. I couldn't think of anything else, and I didn't really want to craft this ring further, even though you can a little bit. If you keep re-adding uh, Remove Add Defense, then you can get a higher ES roll, and you probably want to do that. So, yeah, next off, we'll go to Chevron. So uh, this is, you know, just a really good armor and it allows chaos damage not to bypass energy shield and uh, gives 
a little bit of spell damage and a bunch of energy shield and some lightning resist so yeah overall really good and i highly recommend it i don't recommend any other armor in this build this is the one you want to go for because it allows you to go for a low life build so yeah and low life if you didn't know already uh, allows us to get 30 percent more spell damage and allows us to use more auras so that's why we use that next up we have our gloves has a decent es amount and some resist that's all you need to look for on here nothing else you can get some fingerless silk gloves if you want some spell damage on the implicit but that's not necessary next up we have the belt which just has some strength which we very much need a lot of energy shield and some chaos resist the reason you want some chaos resist is because even though chaos damage can't bypass energy shield we can still take chaos damage so chaos damage is actually very deadly especially this league one of the rituals has a chaos damage uh, ritual and it's a big problem and it does a lot of damage if you don't have any chaos res so make sure you have at least positive chaos resistance which we do have over here 29 percent so that's very very important next up we have the abyss jewel inside and uh, it just gives some decks and some resistance it doesn't need to be an insane jewel it just needs to have some decks and resistance because we lack those things from our uh attributes and our resist so that's what i went for it's nothing crazy um, if you want to upgrade it, you can get some maybe multi if you've killed recently or something. Something of that sort would be pretty good. Or you could also go for some accuracy rating here if you want to as well. That's up to you. So next up we have Sorcerer Boots. And uh, what we're going to do with these is Craft Aspect of Spider. As aspect of the Spider gives us uh, increased damage against enemies up to 15%, which is really, really good. And it also slows them a lot, which is really, really important. And uh, this helps our survivability a lot. So I'd highly recommend that you run Aspect of the Spider. And uh, <clears throat> to craft this, what you want to do is look for an empty uh, suffix over here on your item. And uh, after you find an empty suffix, you want to go and get the beast of someone. Or you might already have it, which is uh, to craft Aspect of the Spider. I can't remember the exact beast you need, but I'm pretty sure all the information's on the wiki if you want to craft that onto your boots. Um, so yeah. The ones, these boots already had them on them and they were really good. But these boots were quite expensive because I went for 35 move speed, uh, which cost like six exalts for these boots. So I'm just letting you guys know these boots are just a bit expensive, but they're not necessary exactly. You just go for 30 move speed and for like 150 ES minimum, you want to go for something around that. So yeah, that's the gear covered, I think, for the most part. Uh, we can go into the links now. So First of all, we run Frost Bomb for the exposure. Uh, gives us minus 25 cold res to the enemies, which is really, really strong. And uh, it, because we're running it in Cosby's Malice, it just gets casted on its own. We don't have to press it. So everything that's linked in here is automatic, the Cosby's Malice. So make sure you are running that. And uh, second of all, we have Frost Bolt. Frost Bolt makes our Ice Nova cast more time. So it's very important that you have this and it ups your DPS a little bit. So highly recommend that you run that. Uh, and then we have an Ice Nova, another Ice Nova in here, just for fun. You can run whether, whatever skill you want or any spell you want in here. You can run uh, Freezing Pulse. I've seen people run that. You can run Hydrosphere if you want. You can run that as well. It's pretty funny. So yeah, you can choose what you want to do over there. So yeah, uh, just, just keep in mind this last spell slot is not really important. You can put whatever you want in there. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So for the helmet, we have Vortex, Frostbite, Hextouch, and Bone Chill. Now, probably you're going to ask me how you're running two curses. You have um, Assassin's Mark and you have uh, Frostbite in here. So on the tree, we take a node called Whispers of Doom. So it allows us to apply additional curse. So that's how we are running both of those. Uh, so Bone Chill is really, really nice. Uh, it increases uh, uh, the enemy's cold damage taken which is really nice and also increases effect of chill on enemies so it makes them even slower so i highly recommend you run that and that's this skill you see over here you might have seen it in the build preview so it just ups your dps a lot so i highly recommend that you also want to try and quality your hex touch support because it gives increased effect of supported curses and frostbite itself gives uh curse enemies have minus 44 cold res and increasing the effect of that is really strong so i highly recommend that Okay, next up in the Prism Guardian, we run three auras. We run Discipline, and make sure you run Val Discipline. Val Discipline is basically a health pot or an emergency button for energy shield builds. 
and it's very very important it stopped me from dying countless times i can't even count how many times i've been saved from vile discipline and you want it on a key that you can easily press for me it's just spacebar because it's just such a good panic button for me so i highly recommend you do that Next up, we have Hatred and we have Zeolatry. These are uh, the reason we're running these in our shield is because this gives socketed gems have 25% reduced mana reservation. So we're able to run Aorus elsewhere on our mana bar instead of our health bar. And our health bar is reserved with the most mana gems, which is really, really important. So we have Hatred 22 here and Zeolatry over here. So these two are really good. Zeolatry gives us a bunch of crit chance, which is very important, and spell damage. And Hatred gives us a bunch of cold damage. So that's very, very important too. And we also run a Hatred Watcher's Eye, which you have to run on this build. Otherwise, you lose way too much damage. So I will tell you why later on. Um, and then we'll go on to the six link in the chest piece. So we run Cyclone, of course, so that we can uh, proc the cast on crit. So we're critting with Cyclone and then we'll uh, cast the Ice Nova on its own with um, Cast on Critical Strike. Now you have to use an Awakened Cast on Critical Strike unless you have cooldown recovery on your belt. You need 14% cooldown recovery on your belt or you run Awakened Cast on Critical Strike at level 3. This is the only two options that you have at the moment. Or you could run it on your boots. You can get up to 15%. But you need to have a minimum 14% cooldown recovery rate on either your Awakened Cast on Crit, your gloves, uh, sorry, not your gloves, your belt or your boots. If you don't have this, your damage goes down the toilet. You do not have nearly as much damage because our whole damage is based on this cooldown recovery rate. Now, you don't need more than 14%, so Awakened Cast on Crit is a bit extreme because at level 5 it gives 22% and you don't really need that at all. And for our build, our attacks per second are really, really good uh, for the amount of... A cooldown recovery we need now i'm not going to explain all of that i'll leave a reddit post down below but all i'll say for you guys is that we are we have 7.48 attacks per second and 7.57 is the break point that we don't want to go over if we go above the break point we lose dps as well so we don't want to go over 7.5 seven attacks per second we're currently at 7.48 and the reason mine is so close is because the key to getting the most damage on this build is being close as close to the breakpoint as possible without going over it and even if possible to have the exact attacks per second as the breakpoint has because that will be the absolute max dps you could get out so as you can see in the clips that you saw before my dps was actually really really good so i highly highly recommend that uh, that you try and get your attacks per second as high as possible and you'll see how I do it on the tree as well um, and the thing is that's what also why we're not running an onslaught flask because if we run an onslaught flask we go over the break point and then we lose damage so we don't want to do that so yeah and it also feels nice not having to rely on an attack speed flask or an onslaught flask because then I won't have inconsistent damage because now I have damage regardless of whether I have a flask or not. So if I spam my flask by accident or if I spam my flask in a boss fight and I don't have any more, my damage is still going to be good. But if I was relying on an onslaught flask, it would feel way worse. So I wouldn't recommend relying on an onslaught flask for your attack speed and just have that attack speed at all times because it feels way, way better. Okay, so now we have hypothermia. Uh, it's just an insane support gem and it helps a lot. It gives a lot of damage and yeah, there's not much more to say than that. Inspiration, we run it to reduce the mana cost because we um, we actually don't have any mana leech or anything like that. We're relying purely on regen, but as you can see, we can pretty much cycle in forever. We never have that. And if we ever run a no regen map, we have an anti-curse enduring mana flask. So we're sorted over there. Okay, uh, next up we have our elemental penetration support. Now, uh, this is a bit funny to get and you don't need to run this, but the reason I'm running this over cold pen is purely because I don't want to get another green socket on my shafts because it'd be really difficult. It was already difficult getting these colors. So if you have a six white socket shafts or six, uh, six white link shafts, make sure you use cold pen instead of elemental pen because that's the best in slot for DPS. Uh, awakened cold pen, of course. Uh, and then... Val Ice Nova 21-23. Now, 23% isn't important, but it gives AoE. But you need to get a 21 gem because 21 gives uh, flat cold. And flat cold is very, very important for this build and scales very well with levels. So make sure you do that. Okay, so next up, we have links in our glove. We have Precision, Herald of Ice, Flesh and Stone, and Enlightened 3. You don't need Enlightened 4 because, yeah, we don't run any more auras and we have more than enough mana. So, yeah. 
the only thing I will say, if you want to ditch Immortal Call and cast some damage taken, you can run a Blood and Sand for more Cyclone AoE, and you can run an Enlightened 4 in here, so you can actually run all of that. It's up to you if you want to do that, I wouldn't recommend it though. So we run Precision for Accuracy, 21, very, very important. Hell Device, really nice. Mainly run it because it gives some cold damage and it's just overall really nice and it gives us a bit of clear, a bit more clear. Flesh and Stone is a very defensive thing that I took and I think it's very, very good. It blinds nearby enemies and makes us just less, makes us take less damage from enemies that are outside our uh, radius of the Flesh and Stone. So it's very, very good. If there's some monster off screen trying to kill us, it's very, very helpful. Okay, so uh, Immortal Call, cast when damage taken, very, very important. We run this uh, for a defensive thing. Now, if you don't like this, you can run Shield Bash and Fortify as well because we have a Prism Guardian. You can use Shield Bash and Fortify, and uh, that will also be really good. But it's up to you whether you, which one you prefer. For me, I just like the brain dead gameplay, so I just have that on the uh, multiple uh, cast from damage taken, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And then finally, we have a Flame Dash in here. Now, the Flame Dash does feel really clunky. So I would recommend running Flame Dash on Second Wind if you can, if you ditch uh, Mortal Core Cosm Damage Taken. Uh, purely because, like, in the Cyrus fight, sometimes you need to dash really quick or you need to dash two times. And that dashing two times in a row with Flame Dash feels a bit clunky. So that's the only reason I recommend that. Okay, finally, we're going to Flasks. So we have a Wise Oak over here. Uh, very important. Now, if you can't get uh, your Cold Res being the highest then uh, you need to run an Itzeri's Promise instead uh, because Itzeri's Promise does not rely, on, uh, your damage won't get reliant on what your resist max resist is. Uh, as you can see, it says damage penetrates 40% of resist of each element for which your uncapped resist is the highest. So our uncapped uh, is cold over here, which is the highest, and you need to make sure it's cold. If it's not cold and you can't make it to be cold, you need to use Itzeri's Promise instead of Wise Oak. Okay. Next up, we have a Quartz Flask of Anti-Freeze. It's very helpful, very nice, and it allows us uh, and gives us phasing and dodge chance. Very, very important, and I highly recommend using this flask on this build. Next up, we have Bottled Faith. So Bottled Faith is not essential, and as I said, you can also use Xerius Promise instead of Bottled Faith, and then run Wise Oak and get your Cold Rest capped. Uh, this will give you uh, uh, lots of damage, so it would be almost identical damage uh, with these two swapped. Uh, so I would recommend that. If you don't have the currency, this would be the ideal flask setup. But we run Bottled Faith, not even for the crit. We run it so that we get Conk Ground, which gives us regen. Conk Ground gives us 6% regen, 6% life regen, which also gets converted to ES regen because we take Zealot's Oath. So that's very important. So And it also gives uh, nearby enemies or people or uh, enemies on Conk Ground take increased damage. So that is really, really nice. Now you're probably wondering, can I run a Cinder Swallow? And I would say no, because Cinder Swallow will give you attack speed and attack speed will lower your damage because we already have very, very close attack speed to the breakpoint. So yeah, if we use an Onslaught Flask, we get like 8.2 attacks per second. And that is really, really bad because we go over the breakpoint and our damage goes very bad. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Next up, we have an Adrenaline Flask Quicksilver. So this is quite nice and I recommend it. Not really much to say, it's just a nice flask. And then we finally have uh, Enduring Mana Flask of Warding. Now you want to replace this with an anti-bleed uh, for the most most of the time because uh, we don't have a bleed immunity flask here, but we do have a corrupted blood immunity on our jaw. So we don't feel the bleed too much, but I'd still recommend running an anti-bleed flask instead of the anti-curse. But for me, I run. Uh, I like to run as many map pods, and I usually uh, flask swap when I need to. So, yeah. Okay. So that's the flask done. Now we'll quickly go over the tree. I'm not going to explain too much of the tree, um, but I will explain, you know, the jewels we took and why we took them and stuff like that. And I will t explain some nodes that look a bit iffy, um, and I explain everything like that. So we go up here, and you're probably wondering why didn't we take the elemental damage over here, like, you know. Why not go for this 10% increased damage and all that for only one more point or whatever? So we're very starved for points on this build, guys. We need every point we could possibly get. So, and you're probably wondering, oh, what's this doing over then? Okay, so we, we take these two points because it gets us close to the attacks per second that we need for maximum damage. So that's the only reason we take that. So anyway, uh, we go up here, we take Assassination, we go for this AoE node. Now you can potentially dish this AoE node, but it gives us minus one AoE radius, and that's really, really bad, and I wouldn't recommend that at all. And then it goes down here, and we take um, this Accuracy node. is very, very good. It gives us crit chance and accuracy, and it's really, really insane. 
Uh, and then we go here and we take this attack speed with this. And we also take these two points. So you're probably wondering, why on earth do you take this point? Like, it's so bad. So, yeah. The reason we take it is for the 40% crit chance. And the reason we take 40% crit chance is because this node actually caps our crit chance without having to take Ambition Assassinate and um, without having uh, Bottled Faith in the calculations. So having 100% crit without Bottled Faith or without relying on anything is so powerful because you basically don't have to worry about your crit chance anymore and you're always critting and maximizing DPS. So on this build, we go for 100% critical strike chance without Bottled Faith. Just to keep that in mind, uh, the, re the how we get that is uh, we take a Hatred Watcher's Eye that has... Two, point, uh, two critical strike chance while affected by hatred. This is very important, and without this jewel, you're at like 80 to 88 or 90% critical strike chance. So, this is no good if you're not 100% crit chance. You need 100% crit chance for maximum damage, and without it, it will feel so inconsistent and it will feel so bad. So, yeah, uh, I wouldn't recommend not running that. And this watch is like can cost from 8 to 10 exalts, depending, or even more than that, depending on the role you get. You need to go for something. I'd say 1.6 or above, or you can divine it yourself or something. As long as you get good rolls on that and check your POB that you're doing 100% crit without Bottled Faith. Make sure you're doing that because without that, you're going to be losing damage. Okay. We just uh, take a Frozen Trail. We have a Corrupted Blood Frozen Trail over here. It's really good. And I got really lucky with this. I just did it in a synthesized map. It was really funny. Uh, then we take this Power Charge. Um thing over here of course because we run power charges on this build and it gives us damage uh not much to say around here then we go up and we take whispers of doom for the additional curse we take uh these two nodes and influence this actually gives us some uh yes because we scale some aura effects so, and we run discipline so, and disciplines and aura so we get yes from it it gives us about 150 yes which is really nice then we go for this thread of hope over here minus 10 large ring and we take arcane focus snow forged Utmost Intellect, Heart of Ice, and Light Eater. Light Eater gives us our spell, uh, our spell damage leech as energy shield, which is really important because we don't even take uh, Ghost Reaver and we don't have any life ES, uh, sorry, any life leech. So we don't actually take Doriani's uh, lesson because we don't need it. Uh, we just take Light Eater and that is more than enough for us. So a uh, quick question about Ghost Reaver, we don't actually need this, and it gives us a less uh, recharge rate, and recharge rate is really good, uh, especially if you've just taken a big hit and you're just running around. If you have a fast recharge rate, you're going to recharge your ES really quick without having to worry about anything, so I highly recommend you ditch Ghost Reaver uh, unless you're running Doriani's Lesson, and then you scale uh, more ES Leech or whatever. Okay, so... Uh, we take Disciple of the Forbidden over here, just a great power charge stacking thing because it gives us mana regen, crit chance, and multi per power charge, which is really nice. We take the uh, Energy Shield node over here, we go and take Energy Shield over here, uh, we go down take Zealot's Oath, really, really good. Life regen is applied to Energy Shield instead. We take another power charge, Faith and Steel. And then we run a Transcendent Flesh here for some multi. So this is giving us 56 crit multi, which is really, really good. And I highly recommend it. We come down here, we take some attack speed, we take some AoE, and we take Sanctity. Gives us some much needed strength and regen as well. So any life regen you get on the tree now is ES regen. So any life regen you get anywhere else is really, really good. Finally, or not finally, but one of the things we take here is Militant Faith with Inner Conviction. This gives us 3% more damage. A power charge or spell damage sorry per power charge which is super strong and it's uh yeah gives us basically uh 21 percent more damage because we have seven power charges so yeah uh finally we run a energy from within over here that gives us uh, a lot of es because this gets turned into es so 16 percent max es is just amazing painted human arcane focus now you need arcane focus you might think oh this is a troll node but it actually makes a huge difference and i'll show you what it does so if you see the amount of light that's around my character over here, and we quickly go and respec uh, one point over here. If you do that, look how dark the screen goes. And you might think this is not that big of a deal, but it really is, especially in dark maps. You get just get confused with the monsters and you don't know what the heck's going on. So I would not recommend not using that. Uh, it's just really troll. And then we've got Pain Attunement for 30% more spell damage. 
So that is a tree covered, guys. And you're probably wondering what this little node here. This is the anoint that we did. It's just showing up here because it's, uh, I don't know why it does that. But yeah, uh, because it's not actually on the tree, it's like floating outside the tree. And if you don't anoint it, it doesn't show anymore. So yeah, that is the build guide, everyone. So I'll leave the paste bin in the description down below. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So let me know if you have anything that you want to ask. Let me know if you do the build and you enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.